Welcome back to Hasbro's Hide. Continuing with our 6.5 Grendel build, parts are continuing to arrive and just about ready to really get to work. Have not gotten the bolt carrier back. Uh, that went back to this company, Primary Arms. They sold it. Of course, they didn't make it as a Faxon bolt and uh, haven't heard crickets from, pa from Faxon. But Primary Arms was particularly responsive. They responded the same day, sent me a return authorization a shipment label, everything, and so I was able to return it to them, and in fact my new bolt carrier group that hopefully is properly staked should be here in the next day or two. And so um, shout out to Primary Arms. I'm really happy with them uh, and their customer service, excellent customer service. And so in fact, for the rest of the build, the lower parts kit, I got a Spikes Tactical lower parts kit. I can't see, probably see all the parts in there, but it's fine. It's basic. Uh, their hand grip, it all seems to be good. That was courtesy of Primary Arms as well. So, got a couple other things here. We're going to start off by shooting some Hornaday black ammunition through it. And so this is the 123 grain ELD ammunition. And this is going to be just fine. It's just going to be a few rounds to put through the gun before I start putting hand loads through. And to compare uh, basic dimensions versus the factory ammo and this ammo. So this is also a Lyman ammo checker. It's a single caliber ammo checker. And so uh, just to make sure your, your cases are fine, they should be flush or below, and hey, Hornady got it right, go figure. And so that's fine, I wanted to ha just have something like that. Normally I have an Ellie Wilson case gauge, but in this case I thought I'd try that. It's a little bit less expensive, and I really don't have issues trimming my cases of length because I use an Ellie Wilson case trimmer. And so this is why we do this. We check this, and it's the case holder. This sets down on the Ellie Wilson uh, hand lathe, and then you can cut this face square and true to the axis of the round. And so uh, this seems to fit perfect well, and I would expect it to. I've never had anything but uh, perfect results with their uh, products. Um, the other things I got from like Primary Arms is a simple, this is an Expo, a simple charging handle, nothing fancy, about as basic as they get, but I'm going to be coating this anyway, and I'll talk about that in just a minute, but uh, we'll be uh, painting and do a camo paint job on this. And so just a basic one, I thought instead of ruining a very expensive one or getting it where I wasn't happy with it, that'll do the job. And if I like it, if I want to change it later, I certainly can do that. So Hornet Ammunition, we'll be shooting some of that in, in, in the uh, gun as well. And then we'll start loading, in fact, with Hornet Brass. Um, before we get into the upper and lower receiver, uh, a nice but basic Magpul uh, SL carbine stock. Uh, again, this will be getting coated as well. We'll be using Elander 10 round magazines. I got 10 rounds just basically because I target shoot a lot with these guns. And this just is a, is a, a good amount for me. I have 10, 20, 30 rounds from my other uh, PRS ARs. And um, that's fine. It's just that, well, I'm going to try 10 rounds. And if I take it hog hunting, well, then I'll probably get uh, the 17 or 24 round um, magazines as well. A uh, set of Hornady dies, and so uh, this is their custom grade dies. And I got this just simply because I'll also be using the uh, micrometer attachment that they have. I have Forster dies for my 308 and for Forster micrometer adjustment dies, and they're really nice, but they're also really expensive. This is like 30 bucks to add to any of your Hornady dies. So this is a 223 uh, die set that I'm using the seat bolts with and it does such a really good job. And so I'm going to take this and put it on to this since they're fully compatible and then we'll be able to use the micrometer seater for those dies as well. Um, ordered this from Veriforce Tactical. Uh, they had a good sale on these. I, I bought several things from Veriforce for my other builds. This is the second one of these I bought. I bought from them. It's, a, it's like 48 bucks. You can't complain about that. Uh, I'm really happy with the quality. It comes with the barrel shims, barrel nut, uh, screws, of course. All that comes with it. And uh, they, they sell for like 48 bucks. And it's key mod, which I don't really care for. Uh, most of my other stuff is m -lock, But I have two of these now in key mod just because you can get them so much cheaper. So for 48 bucks, you get that. It's uh, made by Gun Tech. I don't really have any problem with them. It seems to be uh, just fine and holding up well on my other rifle that I put that on. So that's fine. Before we get to the upper and lower though too, I want to show you the barrel. Uh, this is sort of a budget uh, build on the Grendel and we'll see how budget goes for a while because um, I, t yeah, I tend to be pretty picky. I tend to be too picky at OCD maybe with accuracy and we'll see how the load development goes. But this is a Bear Creek Arsenal. 
uh, 20 inch 6.5 Grindel barrel. And it's stainless steel and one and eight twists. Uh, they have these fluted. They also have them as 5R, none of which were in stock. And so this is a pretty good I think I paid maybe 87 or $90, maybe something around $90. Um, and it's not too bad. Uh, the, the, the chamber and the bore look pretty good. Um, barrel extension, basic barrel extension. Nitrided and that's fine. Uh, cert finish overall, yeah, I might give that a C. That's not so good. Compare, now I'm comparing them to White Oak Armament and Wilson Combat Barrels that I put on my other AR platforms. Um, and so that's maybe not a fair comparison for a you know basically a $90 barrel versus a $300 barrel um, or more. And but that's fine. So it's it's uh, it's 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 well enough made. It's just you can see a lot of the machining marks on the surface of this. I'm going to paint this. It's going to get painted in a desert camo anyway, so really not a big deal. Uh, it's just like. Uh, it would like to be smoother, but that's fine. All this is normally covered under a handguard, so I can see why they would save money and, and maybe not polish that out. And so that's just fine. Uh, I haven't checked the diameters yet to make sure our gas block will seat up tight, but um, you can see it's been uh, turned or maybe, yeah, I think it's finely turned, not ground uh, in this area, but I'll, I'll check the dimensions, make sure everything's good there uh, as well. And then it does have a target crown on the end. So... Uh, We'll see. It's a, it's a basic barrel. It's not the cheapest barrel out there, but it's by far not, I'm sure, the best barrel out there. But we'll, uh, we'll play with that a little bit and see how that goes. Um, receivers. Receivers are from B. King's Firearms. And uh, I don't know if you've dealt with them or not, but B. King's Firearms is a um, veteran-owned, U.S. Marine Corps, in fact, owned business. So I always like to support our veterans um, as well when I can. And so that's, that's great. But what's even better from them is their service uh, and their selection. So they have very good pricing overall, very good service, ship very fast, and I've had absolutely no issues. Um, I do not have an FFL, but transferring them is super easy and uh, just painless with them. And so this, uh, this has worked out very well. So here's the upper and the lower combo. Now... The lower to begin with, very nice. It looks like it's uh, aluminum oxide blasted. Um, very nice finish overall. And really cool laser engraved logo. So hopefully that will all still look good when I bring it out of the camo uh, paint scheme. You'll still see that. I think it will still show through. Um, of course, slightly hidden, and that's what you want. Uh, fire controls all look good, etc. As far as cleanliness, there really are no sharp edges anywhere on it which is great. Uh, of course, you can't expect that when you blast it, too. It'll tend to take those sharp edges off, but uh, really well done down deep inside. Magwell is flared nicely. Uh, not quite as wide as my Aero Precision receivers, but uh, the M4E1 Aero Precisions are really uh, a unique, I think, even wider than normal Magwell, so that's really a nice feature they have, but this is done nicely. It'll certainly be good enough. Um, it's Got a, it's not a solid piece trigger guard across here like my other receivers generally are, but that's fine. Uh, we'll just install that, not a big deal. Be careful, of course, not to break these ears, which have traditionally been a pain. Um, so we'll do that and get that all set up, but everything looks really nice and clean. Uh, now here's the upper. The upper, I've already done a partial assembly. I'll put the forward assist in, and I had to do a little bit of fitting or, or trial and error. The dust cover fits perfect. But this isn't the original dust cover. The dust cover I have is just a basic dust cover you get in almost any parts kit for an upper. And I wanted to put that on there because it was a camouflage to whole receiver. Well, it doesn't fit. So there's something about the dimension, particularly where uh, the hatch, the spring, and ball detent here goes in here, that isn't quite the same. It just wouldn't fit. This one is just perfect. And so I have uh, some more of these. These cost me a few more bucks. They're just, you know, kind of fun, something funny to put on the gun. But uh, now the question is, do I paint them or do I not? And we'll see as we go along the build. I don't know that I will paint this and coat it. Um, so as you look at these together, uh, the fit is actually um, really well done um, overall. And it, I held them up to daylight and looking for gaps because that's the thing when you get the, the other builds I've done, Air Precision match sets, and they... They spend the time, they get them right, and they're really nice. You can hold them to a good background and a light source, and you just won't see it. Well, these I was expecting a little bit of gap, but in fact, they're as good as the Aero Precision. And so, the real shout out to B Key, uh, 
B King's uh, firearms here on the fit that they get on these things. Uh, of course, there, there's there's 7075 uh, T6 aluminum, and that's what they advertise. That's great. That's a really strong grade of aluminum, uh, forged, and that's fine too. Um, but when they go through and they CNC machine everything, they've just done a really good job. But they've done a better job, a little bit better job on the lower than the upper. So if you notice, the upper has not been blasted. Now, I don't know if that's just a mistake or it's just the way they shipped it. It's just the way I got this one. and It's not a big deal because uh, I may have it um, t uh, aluminum oxide blasted. I may not. Uh, it tends to help better with the adhesion of these kind of coatings. But this being a raw forging and I'll have it really clean, maybe not a big deal. But we'll see. Um, and then one other thing you'll notice too is down in um, the Picatinny rail in between the vertical rails is just a little bit of sharp edges. Not a big deal. Um, I take in crocus cloth and just lightly touched these areas. Like the opening here, ejection port right there was just a little bit sharp. So I just touched it a little bit with some emery cloth. Very light uh, metal working paper and uh, that's all it took. So it was fine. Uh, not a big deal. So I'm willing to do all that. This really wasn't terribly expensive and so um, that's great. So everything went together fine. Uh, of course, the only thing I've assembled would be the dust cover. That works great now that I get the right one to fit it. Um, and I don't know that, in fact, the, the fit on the issue was their issue, but the standard cheap dust covers you get from everybody else just really didn't fit. So it could be those dust covers, to be honest, because um, this one fits so well. No big deal. Uh, Ford Assist, again, not an expensive Ford Assist or anything. It works perfect. It's in there. Roll pen fit just as you would expect it to. Uh, started well tightened up well and drove home and very, very secure. So that's all set. Machining inside um, looks really nice. Everything is pretty good. I'll just have very little masking and prep work. I'll probably spray in here just to try to keep it off where the bolt rides and the rails there where the bolt rides maybe a little bit. Maybe not in the first coat um, because I'll do a coyote color for the whole thing using Brownells Alumahide. So I ordered this to do the desert camo. So the base color is going to be Alumahide Coyote all over the receiver, the barrels, and trigger uh, handguard, buttstock, uh, forward grip, pistol grip, as well as uh, charging handle, things like that. So um, that's going to be a base coat for everything, barrel too. And then from there, we'll go back with some desert tans and, and browns to do our camo pattern and end up uh, with a snakeskin pattern maybe across the whole thing. I just think that'll end up being cool look to it and we'll see how that comes out but uh, a rather um, long <laughs> description of what we have anxious to get the bolt carrier group back and if it's all good thumbs up to primary arms i mean they've been really like I say exceptional to work with on having that come in not staked at all so we'll get that back um, hopefully one day at least get a response back from faxen saying oh yeah sorry we messed up still want you as a customer or whatever just acknowledge the fact that they sent a bulk hair group out that wasn't staked at all. So, eh, not a big deal. I'm going to get it straightened out, but I'm getting it straightened out thanks to our folks at Primary Arms. Uh, again, I have no financial or any other ties to Primary Arms. They're just a really uh, nice uh, help uh, and very kind on the phone, etc. as well, and helping me just to turn around another gas block and get that taken care of. So, anyway, that's enough. I'll go ahead and start prepping work, finish cleaning these. And then we're going to start uh, the base coat process.